Hello everyone and welcome. Today I'm going to have a play with some Kuritake paints and I'm going to um, layer them up and it's going to be a little bit abstract. So let's have a look at what I'm going to be using today. Here we go. So the paints that I've got out are the Kuritake Art Nouveau set. Um, these are Japanese traditional paints and they're a little bit um, they're a little bit op opaque which is why I'm, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to layer them so they're a little bit like a, a cross between watercolor and gouache so um, these are the paints that I'm going to be using and the book that has inspired me that I will be using for my inspiration is Creative Watercolour, The Beginner's Guide to Expressive and Imaginate, Imaginative sorry, Painting. It's by Kate Rebecca Leach. And it's I'm going to be doing something along these lines. So uh, these are tree type shapes but they're shapes really so let's have a little go first of all i am going to use this little color wheel and i want to have a limited palette for this so i'm going to on the water there's my water okay we've got our water and somewhere hopefully i've got my sponge so let's get you at the ready as well and i'll need a brush so what shall we use today i think i'm going to use this one. Oh, it's really nice and long but i just fancy using a different brush that i haven't used before this is the number 10 escoda Prada Alvaro Castanet and um, I can I will put a link to all these things below um, the uh, paper that I'm using is 300 GSM cold pressed and this little outline you can find various ones of these if you just um, look up a, a colour wheel chart um, so uh, or you could draw it out for yourself you've basically got three colours on the outside they're going to be our main colours and then when we mix two together to make a third colour on each side that those will be our secondary colours that it's not a true colour wheel because we're not using prime real primaries like um uh, what the primary is uh, red yellow and blue I'm just picking a color palette and seeing if, if they make some nice mixes so I just need to clean that brush off because it would have had I'm not sure what they use but it, it, it it's kind of a bit like glue but it's not glue I don't think um, it just keeps the brushes safe when they are um in transit if you like so i'm going to start off by picking a neutral color and let me just because i'm going to need to know what colors they are so uh flax beige i'm starting off with and that one is up here so let's pop Flax beige in this one. And I should write what they are really. So, funny angle. So, I'm going to put flax beige like that i hope you don't mind me being a slight angle for this 
right the other color that i'm going to choose is this one and what are they calling this cobalt green so let's pop cobalt green just there Okay, there is our cobalt green. So let's write that on there. Cobalt green. And my third colour, which one? I'm going for one of these blues. I think, is that one going to be too dark? That one's going to be a lot lighter. Let's try the lighter one, maybe. Um, they are calling this pale aqua. Okay there is our pale aqua now i need something to mix in so let's bring in this little palette here and we will mix the Black's beige we will mix it with our other two colours okay so there it is with our cobalt green so I wonder if I need a bit more of the Black's beige actually there that's that's better right that gives us this color so that's rather pretty and then we will mix the flax beige with the pale aqua which gives us oh now that's rather nice it's a kind of a grey there we go that's those and then we need to mix our cobalt green it, oh dear, I'm so sorry um, with pale aqua And let's see what we get there. That's a rather, let me move that to one side a moment. That is a rather pretty palette. I've, it's kind of bleeding a bit, but that's fine. I don't mind. You know me. Hopefully you know me by now. Let's just stay calm. It's fine. I can see what the colour mixes are going to be like. So I think that's rather lovely. I think what I also want to do is see whether I can put the lighter colours on top of the darker colours and vice versa, much like you could with um, gouache. So I'm going to use another little bit of watercolour paper let's just pop you we'll pop you there so that you're still kind of in shot like so now what I want to do is get some of this flax beige down 
from sort of quite mass tone although it's yeah it's not watercolor but you know quite thickly applied to where we've got a, quite a lot of water I'm going to do the same with my second color cobalt green and then again with our pale aqua it's always good to do some planning beforehand those of you that are patrons i've done a, um, a video that came out yesterday um, showing lots of planning using these types of colour wheels and doing little thumbnails and um, pulling out other materials like neo colours and coloured pencils that might go along with um, what it is that you're doing. But first, I just need to dry this. So I'll be back in a tick. There we are. That is now dry. So first of all, I want to try the flax beige and see how it acts. Brilliant. So we can put our flax beige over the top of each of those colours. Now let's try the cobalt green. which also works over the top. I think this project's going to work. Right, now let's use our, what was it called, Pale Aqua. And look, that works over the top as well. So we know that we are going to be able to mix more than our three colours so we've got at least six colours here from our three and we know that we are going to be able to um, paint over the top of them as well which is rather fantastic so next i am going to get out my neocolor twos let's have a little look we've got neocolor twos here I'm running out of space on my desk. Let's just move you up a bit and I will put them maybe. Well, I don't really need my water in the shot, do I? So let us move you up a minute and then we can maybe just about get these in. So um, this is a set of 15 Neo Color 2s. Uh, it's not the original ones that were in here. I have um, more Neo Color 2s in this tin here. And I've just curated this for when I go out on plein air, basically. But what I'm looking for are similar colors to these three so we've got these two i think that one's probably more like let me just try okay that one's good so we've got that one um, then I need a green. Mm. We've got these two that might work. What are these called? This one is called dark green and this one is called emerald green. So maybe dark green will be better. Let's just... Yes, because it gives us a nice dark. Okay. So there is my second Neo colour. And then I need one that's more of a, um, 
well something that's going to go with the flaps basically so I've got these this one's more yellow this is called golden ochre and this one's just ochre so maybe ochre let's try ochre but that goes over the top of all of them I'm quite liking this color palette so far so let's use ochre right let's just pop the rest of those away for a moment and now what I want to do is try and find some colored pencils as well uh, um, 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 um. right okay let's go for let's start with our blues and it's not icy enough what about this one what is this this is light cobalt blue number 661 in the luminance let's give that a try and it definitely works over the top of those two and in actual fact it also goes over that but it's and it works really nicely so I'm going to write the names of those next to that so where should I put these perhaps I'll do them down here so there is our blue then we need a green now let me see which of my greens might just might work this is dark sap green number 739 in luminance i have a feeling this will yeah it's almost black but that's fine because it is a it's a really really dark green but that will work so we'll pop you there that could be our black equivalent really and then where are my browns here are my browns right we need something that looks a little bit like that one um like flat uh maybe we go a bit lighter actually um yeah why don't we go with now what were these these were the tombow I bought these recently from Amazon. Oh, Erod, Erodit, Erogiton, which just means all colours, I think. Um, so this is a Tombow um, coloured pencil. And I'm not sure. Oh, it's called Cork. Cork. Doesn't go too well over the green, but it's fine because our neo color did there we go okay so we have our colors let me write down what they all are for future reference so um i'll put neo c2 because i know what that is uh turquoise and dark green and ochre and then in our pencils we have got uh, luminance light cobalt blue and then another luminance dark sap green and then our final one was tombow Cork. 
Okay, so if I bring this up, you can see how lovely all of those kind of mixed. It's just they blend. They um, all the colours are are kind of working together. Um, so I think that's going to be really quite a nice colour palette. Um, it's a different palette to the one that's in the book, but we don't want to be copying. We just want to be doing our own thing really and using that as a as an inspiration. So there we go. I have now worked out the actual Gansai Tambi colours and then my mixed media. The only other thing is I'm probably going to want to use either gold or silver but looking at this I think gold is going to go much better. So has this set got gold in it? No it hasn't. Okay so we need to find a gold so let me just see if I can find, I'll be back in two ticks. There we go. I'm going to um, try a Calero. Um, these are the pearl colours. And if I can get it open, she said. There we go. Um, let us see which, I've already swatched these out. So... I can kind of hold it up and decide which one I think is going to go quite nicely. And I think the gold pearl is going to be the one. So these just pop out. So I'm just going to pop that out for the minute so I haven't got too many big things on my desk. And because I'm only using three of these colours... I'm also going to that one. I'm going to get these out. That one and out you come. Woo! That one goes there. And that one. So let's just move that out of the way. And then what I've got beautifully and I need something to put those in so my patrons have already seen this lovely dish um I'm really not quite sure whether it's a spoon dish a soap dish <laughs> I got it from a, a little local um uh, garden center and um, I think it's going to be just right to just kind of pop my, my crayons and my pencils on um, to keep them all together. So we can pop that, we have them that way around, we can pop that there. Um, right, now I know what I'm doing. I am going to get my sketchbook. So let's get my sketchbook. In fact, we are going to need to move those. And I might have to pull out a little bit. So the sketchbook that I am using is a Strathmore. Oh, that's very shiny. It's a Strathmore Field watercolour. It's uh, cold pressed. It is 300 GSM. And the way that this book is laid out is that you have a piece of normal paper and then you have a piece of watercolour paper. So um, let's just move that up. And where is my uh camera because there we go I think I need to move out a little bit like so there we go I think that's better um so I have sectioned off this um page in my book because this is is this a3 
does it say? Well, it's 14 inch by 11 inches. Um, it's definitely bigger than, I think it is, it's more or less an A3, but it's, it's definitely bigger than an A4. So this is, um, how I'm going to be keeping a record in the future. This is my new system, which my patrons already know about. But first of all, up that way, Michelle, I am going to pop in on the page that is just, um, ordinary paper with my washi tape I'm gonna pop my workings out my planning my process whatever we want to call it I'm gonna pop that in here And then I will have everything that I need together for if ever I want to replicate something similar. So there we go. And I'm using washi tape just in case I want to be able to um, take these off and have them to hand. So I thought that was quite a good idea of mine. There we are. So we've got our, did I cover up the, I need to write Gansai Tambi, don't I? Let's write that here. And I haven't written what the colours, oh well the colours are down here aren't they? So that's fine. Right, so that is just the paper, ordinary paper side. You could just use one side of your sketchbook. And then this is where I'm going to be doing my work. And I've left this here for me just as, um, you know, so it's there in front of me, if you like. Or in case I take those watercolour planners, can we call them that? I don't know. Um, in case I take them off and accidentally don't put them back, which could happen, I'm just going to put my, my colours here as well. So we've got our three colours there. Let's just leave that gold because it might take a little bit of activating. We've got our three neo colours. And we've got our three coloured pencils like so at least then even if things get lost and I will um, label those up but not quite now let's get started let's start doing our picture so our first layer i'm actually going to give a background to um and i'm going to use my flax and before i even start doing these trees i don't want a white background just because i don't she says so i'm not going to measure a kind of a square shape out um let's well actually look, I've, I've, let's just do it like this because i've already 
used my washi tape, haven't I? So I, I don't need this to be an even background. I am just wanting to get a background of some sort so it can be fainter it can we don't have to worry about how we get the background down i mean look look what i'm doing and it will just all mingle and merge i could have wet my paper first I'm just being dreadfully lazy this morning. You could wet your paper first if you wanted to. So let's just get this watered down background in. There we go. And of course, we will need that to dry. So for you, it will be two seconds. But for me, it will be a little bit longer while I dry this off. OK, I am back and this is now dry. So let's start getting in some tree shapes. And if you look, these tree shapes are just kind of irregular ovals, big ones, small ones, etc. And we want them um, to be in all different colours. But for this first, um, well, actually, it doesn't matter. Let's just get going. Let's do. Let's not worry about whether they are fainter than the ones in the front. Although it might give us a nice thing of depth. Right. Let's try and keep. Where is my palette? Okay, there's my palette. Let's try and keep them fairly watered down to start off with. So, and then we can thicken everything up as we um, move forward. So let's get our first kind of tree shape in and this one is quite quite watered down uh, maybe we'll have a small one here so we're just just doing our ovals and these are like trees that are in um, in the background and we could have one that's maybe a bit thinner and longer like so and then we can use some of the mixes um make sure that they're quite nicely uh watered down and maybe this one's a bit more wavy like so and we're just going to keep going with these fairly watered down shapes and we don't have to fill the whole page our next layer we're going to layer on top we can start filling some gaps in um, which is rather nice so I'm just going to oh I'm just going to keep adding colors and water so that I just keep getting a a really good mix of shades of these three colours basically. Let's add a bit more 
and get maybe that grey kind of colour in. Um, this one I think I'm going to do like so, a bit more kind of like an arch. But they're just variations on an oval. Think of it like that. Like so. I don't I don't really want it to be too um too much of a pattern. I want it to be a bit more random, which can be quite hard for our brains to do, to be honest. Let's go with a bit more pure cobalt green water down. And let's have a really a really kind of tall one here. Like that. Now um, let's go back to actually we probably need a bit more of the let's get a bit more of the blue in there. Okay. And maybe here we could, what could we have that's maybe more of a triangular shape? Like that maybe. Okay, then we can have a smaller circle down here. And what colour was I using that one? So these, I, I'm literally just keep mixing on this palette, which I probably keep putting out of shot, don't I? Um, and maybe a, a little wavy one down here. Like that. We could have a little circle there. And our last one, somewhere here, I think, um, we'll go for more of a archway shape. And now this is basically layer number one that needs to dry so that we can get um, some of these markings in. So if I try and find one that's there, a bit closer up. So we need to do something along these lines on our first layer. But let's dry this off first. OK, so that's good. I'm going to find a smaller pointy um, brush. This is a size 8. This is my Esco de Perla by Joseph Zukovic. Zukovic? Maybe that's how you say that. Um, now I'm going to get some details in on these trees. So I'm still, for the minute, I'm going to use the paint because if I start using wax and um, pencils, I'm not going to be able to do my second layer of paint, possibly. So rather than risk that, I am going to just use, so let's get maybe a, a little bit in there and then we can get some stylized branches coming off there so like that and we'll have another one over here and maybe for that one we'll go a little bit 
more like a leaf than a tree but it's fine because this is just um well, it's just doodling really let's get a little bit more water on there and then um with these circles maybe we can just make them into some kind of pod um just a shape really so i'm not bothering about um making all of these into trees although to be honest maybe that one might make a nice nice little like so let's move to a different color might help me think a bit more so let's have the dark color coming down and this time maybe we'll have more because this is a wavy kind of tree we'll have this kind of thing going on like so and maybe this circle one maybe we'll make i'm just using my brush to make those leaf shapes and that can come down like that let's get some of that green down the bottom here so i think with this one we will go a bit of a thicker um stalk no not stalk trunk trunk that's right a bit of a thicker trunk well have thicker branches coming off and maybe some dots in there as well okay let's move to our aqua and let's start with this one there's quite a lot of water on my brush there right okay oh no let's start with this one because i've already got a round blob on there by accident which is fine because we're just going to work with whatever happens so we'll get some circles in there oh, I, I think I'll leave that I won't put a trunk on that one um, let's go up here and what should we have on this one um, we probably need something a little bit different but let's see what happens let's, let's maybe Just go like that a little bit for that one. And maybe we could, I've got ink on my hand, not ink, paint on my hand. Um, let's just put some little circles on this one. Like so. Right, how are we doing? We've still got a few to go so let's go back to let's go back to our blacks and let's pop a trunk on that one and maybe that one goes a little bit like that i'm not sure if you can maybe you can see that I'll bring this up in a minute and then you can see what I've done and then this we can just do a 
some open circles. That's looking okay. Right, I'm going to go back to cobalt green now. And this one will go all the way down with quite a thick and maybe we'll go the other way just for some interest so we're going down like that so that's something a little bit um, different as well this one up here maybe we'll put some more of these open circles there one more to go what color do we want in there we'll keep with this cobalt green i think and um let's do it quite thinly um let me see what we could do here Perhaps we'll be a little bit more elaborate than we have been. Now, I'm going to tell you something because I've ended up putting my uh, palm in there. So I would say you're better off working from the top down when doing this. So uh, there we are. That is layer number one that has to dry. And then we'll be putting um, another layer on the top and maybe even a third layer. But it will be the third or the last layer. Let's call it the last layer that instead of using um, paint, I will be using some of these other materials for. So uh, two ticks while I dry this off again. Here we go. So there we have that first layer all dried off nicely. Let's move on to layer two. So um, I'm now going to use all the same colours but I'm probably going to do them well I am going not probably that doesn't help any of you does it um, I'm going to do them a little bit um, with a little bit thicker paint and what I want is for them to let's go back to our um, picture here I want them to overlap like they are here so let us start with maybe quite a triangular one that we can put there so you can see i'm using this paint very thickly now so we've got one there now let's get more of a uh, where should we put this let's put this one uh, here and I want a fairly wobbly one a wobbly one does that make sense So we're going to get you in there. I don't mind if it if the ones below peek through a little bit. I just need it to be more more opaque than the first layer. There 
Can we get some of these big ones in? And there's our very wobbly one. Let's get a big one in over here. Uh, maybe around about here. And this can be a skinny tall one. Ooh, will this go over? Well, it's going over enough. Okay, there we go. So we've got three big ones in. Let's go back to our green. And I think we will get a, a round one here. And my cobalt green. So, I mean, it literally is going over the top of that one there. And we'll get another, perhaps we'll just get a round shape there to echo that over there. Uh, let's do the same with our blue. So let's get a blue circle in there. And maybe a bigger blue circle. Where are we going to get our bigger blue circle? Maybe... Hmm. Well, maybe we don't. <laughs> maybe we don't. Let's just get... Um, it's harder than you think because I'm trying not to put so many um, two colours the same everywhere. So maybe let's go with more of an egg shape here. Okay, and then we need two more of this colour. So we will put a, a smaller circle there. And maybe a even smaller circle there. In fact, let's get some smaller circles in while I've got this in my hand. Okay. Uh, what one didn't I do? Not the blue. Now let's go back to cobalt. Okay, let's go back to cobalt and we will get a more oval shaped tree in here. Or egg shape. Like so. And yep, yeah, that's good. And then we need some, I'm going to put there, we'll see. Let's get some circles that are not filled in. We can get some of those in around here and here, like so. And then I think I think just here we will go with a bigger round a tree. Uh, 
Now, I think I also want to get a smaller round, like so. And maybe we'll get one up here, like so. We could have actually. Do they need to be circles? No, they, they probably do. Let's have one there. And we could maybe have... It's almost like we need something here, isn't it? Let's go for a... So now I'm looking at where the, the gaps are a bit too much, almost. Um definitely down here bit of a gap so I think let's have some more of those ones like that and maybe a one that's filled in okay I am not liking that tree very much I don't know about any of you, but that tree is not doing it for me. So I am going to go over this a bit more. I'm not really liking this colour over the top, but it's fine because I think what I will do is I will really have to use my pencils and things. Um, in fact, it's kind of at an angle, probably because of where I'm sitting. Okay, let us get this dried off and then we can decorate the circles and the tree shapes and see what else we want to do. Okay, so I'm hoping that is dry enough. I think it is. So let's move on to decorating our second layer. I'm going to start with this one that's bothering me <laughs> because I'm not sure that I like it too much at the moment. So I think what I'm going to do is use this ochre in the Neo Colour 2 and I'm just going to give it I'm going to go over the top to give it some texture and there I think that now that now looks a lot better um, so to add to that we obviously need to get our trunk in so we'll use this one and we will have a go at doing it like this i think like so did i just put my head in the shot i hope not right that is looking better for starters we'll, we will add to that now i'm going to use the turquoise blue for this one so let's get our trunk in for that one and i think we will do the let's do it like so for this one like that that's come out quite nicely 
Um, let's use the um, ochre in this one and bring that down like so. Um, perhaps we'll do that one in that direction to match the one over here like that. So I'm looking at what I've done before and where I can maybe um, copy those those patterns into these bigger ones here. So um, let's use the light blue on this one, the uh, turquoise blue. Um, maybe we'll mimic this one here. So in other words, we haven't got to keep coming up with new ideas. We can just do it like so and get some of those round circles in and then it will kind of echo oh that's my book gone on the floor but that's fine right let's go back to our cobalt uh, no what was this dark green to get something in um here so we will pull that one down like so and perhaps we'll kind of mimic this one over here. It's so satisfying going over the top. It's rather nice. Okay. So we've got those. Um, maybe we'll start using our pencil. Um, I've got the dark sap green here and I'm just going to put some dots in this one like that and let's see maybe maybe on this one this oh, we've already got the blue there let's see what happens using this it doesn't really show up that well right in that case I'm going to bring out this is a metallic craft work pen in gold Guangna anyway a gold pen <laughs> let's just say a gold pen find yourself a gold pen and I'm going to that works much better I'm going to use that on this one um, and I think And then we'll get some smaller ones off of there as well. So there we go. Oh, did I get my head in? Oh, we'll see. And I think we will try what's happening with this. Let's just clean it off a bit. Nope, that's not working. We'll leave that for a minute. Um, we need to use this gold pen elsewhere, otherwise it's going to look very odd. So let's get some little circles in there. And we'll get some kind of teardrop shapes. Uh, on here, or teardrops, leaf whatever we want to call them on that one okay let's go back to using our dark sap green and we've got dots there so perhaps we'll have some more 
dots here. Obviously, you know, you don't need to copy what I'm doing. You can, um, you can just do whatever you would like on yours. I'm going to make that one into a star shape. And that one into a star shape. Uh, what have we got left? We've got this one here. Um, what should we do with this one? Let's you. Well, why don't we put the dark green on the dark green? Well, I'm going to leave that as a circle rather than a tree because it's going to go over the top of that. So um, I think I'm just going to do big circles, little circles. like that right something here let's go back to let's get a bit of the ochre in to kind of go with that and let's do those open circles some bigger than others like so We've got this one up here to do something with and we'll get some of those open circles up here on there um, and then maybe we'll get some more of those crosses in like that now I want to bring in my Calero gold that I picked out so let's get that mixed up quite nicely and I'm just going to Put these round blobs here and there. I'm not so I'm not doing them all on one tree. I'm just picking out. where I want to um, put it, put them. This one's going to just have some little small ones on, like that. Uh, I think we could make, let's make one of them in gold. And then for this one, we could just add in some more branches that are gold. I'm definitely going to put something there because I'm not quite sure what happened to that. I think where I dried it with the... Um, A heat gun it's kind of bubbled over a bit and maybe this one can have more more gold bits on it like so right how are we doing um maybe we could also put some of these oval shapes here and there Uh, one, two, maybe we'll add one more in. 
three. In fact, maybe that one can be filled in. Like so. Um, then maybe up here. What can we do on this one? Smaller ones. Like that. Maybe that one could be kind of filled in a bit. We don't want to go too berserk. We don't want it um, absolutely everywhere. Otherwise, it loses its impact. But I do feel that this needs something, so I think I'm going to go up the side. And kind of just echo. Like that. Do I need to balance that by putting three in there? Maybe that needs three. Let's put one there. And one here. Okay, I think it will just end up far too busy and sometimes we have to know when to stop. So let me just give you, I've lost my page now where my book fell on the ground. Oh, here we go. Right, so that is what I've worked from as um, an idea. I haven't done exactly the same as that at all, but I've used it as an idea. Um, this is mine. I'm going to dry this and then we can take off the masking tape. Okay. Let's take the masking tape off then. Or actually, this is washi tape, to be fair. Um, mainly because I have quite a lot. Which end are we going to start with? I need an end. There we go. There's an end. Um, I've got quite a lot of washi tape left over from when I did a lot of art journaling. Um, so um, I've just been using it up, really. get this one off And there we go, there's our last one. There. So, I will bring that up a bit closer for you so that so you can see the effects that we have here, which I think is rather nice. I'm rather liking that. I think that's, um, I like my colour combination. I'm very happy with what I chose. Um, yes, I think um, if I was to do it again, 
I probably wouldn't use the flax over the top that didn't come out very well at all but the others did and to be fair the gold pen um, that was quite hard to work in in places where um, the paint was quite thick so I think probably better off using the Calero um, I think that was the pale gold wasn't it pale gold um, let me just double check Uh, no, that was called Gold Pearl um, from this set. So, um, yes, what do you think? Something that if you are just wanting to have fun with your colours, come up with a colour palette that you might want to use another time. Um, so that you can you've done something so that you can see how all the tones work together uh, I think this is a lovely idea for um, you know your sketchbook and I really quite like doing this kind of testing first um, I mean you know this is wonderful for you know another time when I think that's the perfect palette that's exactly what I want and I'll be able to look back and I'll be able to see how they all work together from this very simple picture of course the picture on its own is quite nice as well so um, yes on my patreon I've already done um, uh, looked at a couple of reference pictures and using these color wheels and I, I paint a picture from a reference picture using one of those color wheels um, and show you how they've been working for me so um, you know if you are interested then do have a look at my patreon but in the meantime do stay um, stay safe stay healthy and stay calm until I see you next time and just thanks so much everybody for subscribing which helps me to keep the channel running and also um, you know for um, tuning in and watching so till next time bye for now